Hi all and welcome to this eCognition Deconstructed video. Today we're gonna have a look at an algorithm called Find Local Extrema. What it does, it finds a local extrema, uh, either minimum or maximum for a certain feature in a certain distance. Right? So what you can find here is a search setting. So you can say, all right, look into classes that are classified as this and that. So you can set a class filter here for the search settings. So it only looks at those and you define a search range. So it only looks at a certain range. Uh, you can imagine a buffer around the active object in the center and then looks in a buffer of five or 10 or 100 meters and then evaluates all these objects that fulfill these criteria uh, if the active one is a minimum or maximum of a certain feature. And all of these things are defined in the conditions section in this parameter section of this algorithm. So you can define, uh, am I looking for the minimum or maximum, which features, you can use all the features that are available in eCognition. And then you have a section where you can define um, how to deal with equal extrema, right? Uh, we're gonna have a look at this in the project itself. Um, right, and finally classification sections, do you wanna classify if it's an extrema into which class you want to classify that. So what is so what is actually going on? To put it in a nutshell, to simplify it here, um, it looks or it checks for each object that you've defined in the domain if this object is the max or minima extrema within a search distance that you've defined for a specific feature. If yes, you can classify this one as into a certain class. Um, and the larger the search radius in general, the lower the number of extrema because you're increasing the number of competitors if you're increasing the search radius. Let's assume you are an image object and you want to find out if you're the smallest or largest object in a certain distance. That's a classical example here of how to use this algorithm uh, regarding elevation data. So am I the largest or smallest mountain in a certain area and that highly depends on the context that you're looking at right if you increase the search distance um, you might not be the biggest uh, mountain anymore that's exactly the example let's say all right in this area in this circle in this search distance am i the biggest one yes you are so you can be classified as extrema if you change the search radius to a larger radius like this for example you see if it checks for the center one, so am I still the largest mountain in a larger search radius? Nah, I'm not anymore. Look at this guy over there. That's a bigger mountain. So it highly depends on the search radius, yeah, right? The result that you receive. If we look at a cross section of elevation data, for example, you can imagine a, a moving uh, buffer distance or window that looks within that buffer if the center object is actually the extrema. In this case, if you look for maximum, the, these axes, they're gonna be the maximum. And now we're looking for minima in this feature. Again, if you increase the buffer, you're gonna get a different result because you're including more of your surrounding. And that means that uh, one extrema that was classified previously with a small buffer is in this case not classified as extrema anymore because the buffer area has been increased. The same is true if you're looking at the minima. In this case, let it run for minima. So it's gonna find less because you're including more context. Enough of theory. Uh, you can always go back and check these slides. Let's have a look at a, a, a use case. So. I simply have here a layer uh, in a project uh, with elevation data, so elevation information uh, taken from SRTM, I guess. Now what I do here, I simply create random objects. So it's, it's just a chessboard, uh, doesn't reflect any information of the layer. And now I'm using this find local extrema and say, all right, I wanna find the lowest, so the minima in the elevation. So I just have layer one, which is representing the elevation. Very important also is the class filter in the search settings. So I set it to the local extrema min. That's the class I'm gonna classify the extrema into and unclassified. 
Search range is 250. Uh, what else is important? Classification settings at the bottom, active class, local extrema min. So it's gonna classify the extrema into that class. And the class filter is very important to have both. Otherwise it won't include the already classified object that is an extrema. All right, and this is the result. So the red objects represent the found extrema based on the parameter. So the minima for this feature in a search distance of 250 pixels. How to change the settings if you're looking for the maxima. It's exactly the same, um, but you have to change the type here to maxima. Um, in the class filter at the top, it's important that you have also the class that you classify your extremas in, otherwise they will be uh, neglected, right? So it makes sense to keep them in this analysis. All right, if you decrease the radius or so the search range here, you're gonna get more, it makes sense, right? It's gonna find more extrema. If you increase it, you're gonna find less. And now these extrema, they correspond with local peaks in your data set, so to say, right? So in this case, it's mountain peaks that you see are highlighted, but always in relation to the local information, right? Another example, uh, let's assume you have a point cloud data set and optical data and you want to find uh, single trees in your forest. So you could use this approach to get somehow the peaks of or in your data set which correspond to the trees. So what I'm doing here, I have a point cloud. I do a rasterization of the point cloud uh, to get a DSM, so digital surface model. Afterwards, I do a classification based on elevation. Simply gonna put stuff that's elevated into the class forest and then create smaller objects using the chessboard segmentation again. So again, chessboard, not very meaningful objects in this case because it's just creating uh, chessboard segments without reflecting any spectral information. Um, but that's gonna help us to classify smaller areas. I'm not going down to the pixel level, so I choose, I guess, a chessboard of four, uh, four or two. Um, right, and now I wanna find local extrema in my forest. So I use this find local extrema algorithm. I'm only looking at forest, so I define that in the domain. Uh, in the class filters here, again, I have my forest, but also the trees, the trees gonna be the target class, so I'm gonna classify the extrema into the class, but I have to define them here so that they are kept in the loop, right, of this local extrema. Search range, right, let's start with five and continue. I'm gonna look for maximum because I wanna find the center of the tree uh, or the peak of the single trees and I'm looking for the mean DSM, so the elevation, um, again, any feature is possible. I think this is just a very good example of elevation, very, very simple to understand. And that's the result. I'm quickly gonna change the colors so it's better visible for you and also for me. So yellow now is forest and red are the objects that were classified as extrema. Let's try to only display the extrema, so that's the tree tops. Uh, you can go to view and filter the class for display. So only this class now is displayed. And you see it nicely corresponds actually to also the peaks that you see in the DSM. Um, but again, you're gonna have extrema that are extremely high and extrema that are also fairly low, always depending on the distance that you define here in the search range. Let's change the search range. Um, so I increase it, what does it mean again? Yes, correct, you're gonna get less because you're gonna have more uh, trees fighting for the extrema, right? If you decrease it, you're gonna get more. So be aware of that fact. Um, final step here in the rule set, let's go back to five, is that I convert it into vectors um, simply because I want to show you 
also because we have a point cloud so we have 3d data uh, and converting my objects into a vector i also can say create a 3d vector um, and also display my vector result in 3d in e-cognition um, let's change the settings here so we only see the forest points and i'm going to increase the size of my my extrema and you see they have 3d information so the elevation is also written into the attribute table and that looks stunning that would be one approach that you could think of when you're looking for single trees in the forest and you have elevation data there are different million, million ways how you could uh, tackle this issue that's just one using local uh, extrema wow that's a nice algorithm right so go ahead and use it uh, thank you for watching this video and hear you next time <laughs>